Uh, hi everybody, uh, I'm just gonna punch uh, through this presentation pretty quick since uh, we only have like 10 minutes to do this. Uh, my name is uh, Sebastian Oterola and together with my, uh, my colleague Johan uh, Olsson we were the creative team behind the Happy Goggles, uh, a, McDonald's, uh, uh, a McDonald's project uh, last year. Uh, I work as a creative technology director, uh, you and also, we have the same title, but we focus on the completely different things. I focus on the technology part and you want to focus on the creativity and the experience part. Uh, we're uh, a team of totally three and we try to have as much fun as possible uh, during work because we think it's really important to uh, 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 being relaxed in a high uh, high performance environment but when we're not having fun we actually work and uh, we do uh, in short digital product business development and creative technology and a lot of R&D so we get to test a lot of new technologies and we try to explore it in the, uh, uh, and coming from like uh, uh, advertising background we have to try to fit in in, in communication we're a part of the DDB Nordic group uh, uh, which is an umbrella corporation with uh, lots of um, uh, agencies beneath them and we have been given the responsibility to work across uh, all the uh, all the agencies and countries which is really nice we get to be in some real some really nice and cool projects and this is one of those projects so let's uh, go into what we actually did I guess everybody knows what a happy meal box is and uh, we get to uh, we got the chance to actually rebuild it i'm going to jump uh, jump the actual case study or the case movie and jump into the actual results because it's still going to give some context on what we actually did so just to save some time your kids will love the dog's happy meal it's food and fun in a box and for over 30 years, kids have loved their Happy Meal and its free toys. But today, kids' play patterns and expectations are changing fast. The Happy Meal needs to move with the times. Happy Meals are going high tech. Look, watch this animation here, it's quite clever. McDonald's locations in Sweden, the Happy Meal boxes will convert into low-cost virtual reality headsets. Kids can unfold the iconic red box and hold it up to create the Happy Goggles. Happy Goggles. Happy goggles. <laughs> happy goggles. And it's one of the cooler things we've seen in a while. The plain old box didn't just become a VR headset, it also became headline news. Covered across the globe. Most case films always include results. But most of all, we'd like to talk about potential. Fast Company put it pretty well when they said, Its potential reach is almost unfathomable. The company sells over a billion Happy Meals each year. If each were fit with VR capability, they'd outscale the initiatives of Oculus, HTC, and Samsung combined. By harnessing the power of a global icon like McDonald's Happy Meal and democratizing VR, McDonald's can play a role in revolutionizing the way children learn. Be that by making immersive reading experiences or helping every kid see the world without traveling. We believe the possibilities are endless. Happy Goggles, a virtual reality headset made from a Happy Meal box. Thanks for watching. So, uh, yeah, that was the results. These are some updated numbers from, uh, I think, last month. And it's, it's really nice. I mean, it's a really good return of, uh, or an investment for, for the client. But what we really wanted to do was, as uh, Fast Company picked up, is that we are have the opportunity to have a billion units in the world that, that uh, would be fit with VR capabilities. And it's a really nice... Uh, I mean, a, a nice opportunity to d democratize cheap VR. And we never intended to do this as a marketing stunt, as, an, as a one-off. We uh, approached this project as a product development and uh, tried to build, or the idea was to build a, a long-term VR platform and try to eliminate the plastic toys because 
as you know, as soon as you have a, part, a couple of goggles, you can fill it with any kind of experience. And that's what we wanted to do. And of course, have both education and entertainment or combining those both. And these are some, uh, some units that we uh, did with the box. I unfortunately can't go into, into all the pieces. So we cherry picked some of the, the best or the most valuable learnings that we had. Uh, so we are starting with the challenges of creating a $3 VR he headset that should come with a burger and some fries. And we had like guidelines, what we wanted to accomplish, and the first one was it's, we wanted to make it shareable, so it was easy to pass along to friends and families, and be able to fit for kids and adults uh, with different hands and face sizes. The content should should be snackable, so the content should be short and fun, and we wanted the experience with the box to last no longer than five minutes. So this is a different approach than going for totally immersive. We wanted this to be a social experience. It should be simple to fold the, for the box, so it shouldn't take more than one minute. It should be accessible. It means that it really did, don't really matter what kind of phone size you have. And we wanted, and we needed to, of course, make the box safe. So we did, we couldn't have any loose part in uh, on the box. Uh, no uh, strong loose or anything that could be harmful for uh, for children. <coughs> and of course, it needed to be cheap because a product that sells a billion units doesn't scale really well if you increase the cost with one kroner. And one thing that really we had to think about is that size actually matters here, since we have a fixed canvas of a size. So we had to map out the, the goggles onto it and then reverse engineer with the optics and try to fit the, the, the distance between the phone and the actual, uh, actual eyewear. We ended up with uh, doing 30 prototypes, some with buttons, some without buttons, some with conductive tape, some with conductive ink, try to see and find the cheapest way and uh, the easiest way to assemble the box once the uh, consumer received it or the user interacted with it. And of course, McDonald's is a brand that everybody loves to hate, so we were really, really careful with how we built the box since uh, we didn't want like the breath of the internet coming crashing down on us. And we never, uh, and we actually never intended it to also be uh, just distributed in the advertising channels. We wanted to target like the tech sphere of it, and uh, uh, of course, getting like uh, uh, an article on Wired, which, uh, which I think, or for me, is like the holy grail. I always wanted to be uh, and like have something featured in Wired. It's awesome. <laughs> As since we're compressing this uh, this talk uh, from 60 minutes onto 10 minutes, uh, you can uh, you can check out the Google Tech Talk that we did, where we go more in depth into the project. It's a 60 minutes on uh, where I think we present how we did a rip off of the Google Cardboard, which is really nice, it's a of fun. And also the tech the tech part of this is the accessibility. Since McDonald's is an accessibility brand or accessible brand, it needs to be present in uh, all kind of mobile platforms. It means goes for iOS, Android, Windows phones, and that was something that we needed to take in consideration when we build the experience. We also needed to uh, explore the the new possibilities with user experience for VR, since the phone was locked in a in a box. How we could interact and cue the experience, and we uh, experimented with like trying to nod to start the game and giving audio feedback to the users so they can they can cue what what to expect next next, uh, which was a nice challenge. And uh, if yeah, if you watch down in the left corner, that's actual game design before we actually built out the experience. So uh, the game design was done in, done in uh, Google Pages, which is a great game design tool. Uh, once we've set the frame, or we have a notion that we, what we want to build in our team, we go into something that we call the rapid prototyping process. It's that we set a, a time limit of three days to get something, uh, to get some kind of progress. If we fail during those three days, we consider the project to be a high-risk project, maybe, uh, uh, meaning that that the uh, technology might be uh, uh, not mature enough, it's not mainstream enough, or it, the cost is just too high. So we try to pivot from that. Uh, 
fortunately we found an experience that uh, kind of fit our needs so we rebuilt it to, uh, to fit VR we added stereoscopic effect to it uh, sp split vision and we added the orbit control and we spent a lot of time in on stack overflow since documentation wasn't really good for the tools that we uh, built it with and as some of you know uh, Three, uh, when you're in virtual reality, frames uh, uh, frames per, per seconds are really important. If we drop frames, we can really get nauseous. And this was especially important since the kids that probably had, had had this Happy Meal had just had a burger, so it was really, really important <laughs> to, not, to not drop below 60 FPS. Uh, the execu execution part. Avoid, avoiding a world of pain, as I've mentioned that Happy, uh, that McDonald's is an accessible brand, they need to be available on uh, all the mobile devices, meaning that if we were going to build a native application, we, we would have to uh, done it for the iOS, for the, for the Android, for Windows Phone, and probably different versionings from iOS 8, 7, and so on, meant that we were going to have to, um, uh, to hire a... a a really broad uh, development team. So what we did instead was that we uh, we built it for the web, ma ma making it platform independent from start. So the limitations would res reside in the user's uh, browser and not at the platform. So uh, it was really good because it eliminated the, the threshold of downloading an app. You just go into a URL and then you start the experience. And we wanted the experience to be easy and, and fun to start with. <coughs> uh, we took a lot of inspiration from old school games. If you remember uh, the first Zelda that you start in a dark cave with a wooden sword and that's it. And you go out in the world and explore. We wanted the same thing here. We wanted to tilt the phone and then let the user look around and uh, get familiar with, the, with the, the new experience in virtual reality. Um, but when you go for web, you have... Another, uh, some other problems, it, it's the screen dimming, since we can't really access it or remove the screen dimming, uh, we had another problem with that, so we had to solve it uh, on, on another fashion, by touching the screen. And this is uh, done by the production company in North Kingdom, they come back to us with a solution where you have to wipe off some frost from your goggles, uh, from the screen, hmm. uh, meaning that we would... Uh, removed uh, just the, the screen dim uh, functionality which was awesome but it also meant that we needed to add a hole to the box which meant that the whole box was unstable so we had to rebuild that box <laughs> hmm. uh, guidelines for the tech was the same thing shareable no leaderboards as soon as we had the leaderboards we were we saw that we were starting to uh, chasing high score meaning that we were going to get fixed at the experience and not really uh, experience it as it should be as a snackable uh, um, content. Uh, simple, tilt to play and explore, and accessible one URL that doesn't matter if you're on an Android, a Google phone, or a Blackberry, or whatever, it just works. And snackable, average time per run was three minutes. Uh, we built in an uh, uh, increasing speed in the game, so you could, the game was rigged, but it felt like you just lose control of the when you were skiing down the slope, which is kind of evil, but it, uh, still awesome. <laughs> and some famous last words. This was our plan when we uh, started to build the project. This was actual reality when it kicked in. Uh, and uh, we started with the prototype and research, and we encountered a bunch of problems. And if you want to know how we solved those problems, please check out the Google Tech Talk. Uh, and when you get stuck on those problems, if you haven't read this book, please do. Uh, it's called Smarter, Faster, Easy Way to Build a Successful X. Just ignore the web application. It's more of a philosophy on how to focus on things that will uh, add to the project instead of like focusing on, I don't know, choosing colors, which sometimes is irrelevant uh, for moving forward. And when we do pressure testing, what we do in our team is that we usually start with the core. Uh, if the core doesn't hold up, it doesn't really matter how beautiful we, we try to add, the, uh, we make it up. And for us, the same thing was here. The core, if, if the core for us in this project was the box. If the box wasn't holding up, we couldn't have done this, uh, this entire project. Thank you.